So, Senator, now I know how to get some applause when I walk into a room. That's right. <laughs> I don't think so, Senator. You know, they talk about APL being a national resource, but the reality is, Senator, I, you know, you, you yourself are a, are a true national resource. We're honored to have you here with us, uh, with us today. Um, you know, as you might imagine, the, there have been some horrific events that have occurred in Paris over the last several days, and, you know, that weighs pretty heavily on our minds here at, at, at APL. Um, and it, it serves as a reminder of the critical importance of the national security we, work, we do here at the, at the laboratory, which in addition to our civil space work, you have been a great supporter of, especially of our troops, and we appreciate that, appreciate that very much, and really appreciate your taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and, and visit with us. Now, as most of us know here at the, at the laboratory, it's hard to overstate the impact of Senator Mikulski's um, many contributions during her years of public service. She, of course, first served as a city council member in Baltimore, then later served as a, a representative in, in Congress, and of course today she serves as Maryland's senior senator and is a tremendous supporter of the, of the laboratory. Uh, senator Mikulski has been a role model for elected officials. She reaches across the aisle on a regular basis. She's a tireless public service, an advocate for science, technology, engineering, mathematics, innovation, and of course education very broadly in Maryland and across the nation. And she's been a great friend, not just to APL, but to the broader Hopkins institution as well, and we greatly appreciate that. And of course, she has been a great friend to all of the institutions at Maryland, and if you've interacted with the Senator at all, you'll hear refer to Team Maryland, which means we can achieve a great deal when we come together, uh, bring together the tremendous resources that we have available in our state. Now, although she's visited APL many times during the, during the years, this is actually her first visit to Building 200, okay? And what's really neat about that is that in many ways, Building 200 exemplifies our partnership that we've developed over the years with the, with the Senator. Uh, during the past 20 years, she's been deeply engaged in our efforts to develop innovative, low-cost uh, space exploration missions. Uh, we've developed missions that have studied planets, comets, radiation, uh, space weather, and of course, the Earth. Uh, we also celebrated a number of American firsts with the, with the senator, most recently, of course, being the, the Pluto flyby. And what some people may not realize is that the Pluto mission, the New Horizons mission, would not have been possible without Senator Mikulski's uh, vision and support. She fought relentlessly and successfully for a cost-effective Pluto flyby mission after a number of other missions fault started to, to Pluto. Uh, after the mission was awarded to APL, she continued to support the programming, the program, ensuring that it was funded and stayed on track until its launch in January 2006, which of course we all know Pluto was still a planet at the, at the time. Now, in honor of, the, of Senator Mikulski's visit today, we've prepared a short welcome video for her, and I'd like, uh, like to show that now. fully grasp what new explorations of planetary science, I mean, you've been to just about every one. The fact of this field called solar science and out of a small facility was coming incredible innovation. 
both in terms of science and what we should go to to discover and study, but the technological achievement in producing the instruments to do it. Barbara Mikulski tells these stories about how when she was growing up, she wanted to be a scientist. She never lost her love for that, and that turned into somebody that is a national leader and arguably has done as much for scientists as almost any scientist or engineer because of what she's done in setting national priorities. So we... Senator Ronard, and I know you just applauded, but ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Senator Barbara A. Mikulski. Good morning, everybody. Uh, First of all, I'm just so glad to see all of you and to be here once again uh, at APL. And Matt, thanks for moving over the stool. It wouldn't be a real speech if I didn't have my little stool uh, to stand on. Um, it's just a delight to be here at APL and with so many of you. I've been here a lot uh, over the years, but this is my first time in this really cool, cool building. Uh, it looks kind of uh, uh, like an early precursor of, uh, precursor of Google. And we like all of the space stuff hanging up from the ceiling and so on. But what I so admire is not the building, but what goes on in the building here at Building 200 and at APL. I wanted to come by and see uh, Dr. Semmel and all of you today because we're in the closing hours of working on the appropriations for next year, and I wanted to be sure that we had our must-do list to be able to get the job done so you can continue to do the job you've been doing for this country and for all that we do in space. I want to thank Dr. Semmel for being here today. I knew there were some family challenges, and it was a sacrifice for you to be here, Doctor. Thank you very much for coming, and we did have our must-do list. Well, you've all heard that last March uh, I announced that I was not going to seek a sixth term. Uh, but I want you to know that though I am turning a new page in a couple of months, I'm not ready to write the final chapter. So when I announced that I wasn't going to seek re-election, and I thought long and hard about it because I had planned to do so, but as you get ready to hire your campaign manager and your pollster, there's a whole little infrastructure that comes with it, I realized that I had two years to serve and would be signing up for six, a six more year term. And I thought, well, how do I want to send the two years left in the term I have? Do I want to worry about keeping my job or do I want to worry about your job? Do I want to worry about my next election? Or do I want to worry about the next generation of young people who seek big dreams to be able to do big things? Do I want to spend my time raising money for myself or raising hell for you? Well, I decided I'm going to raise hell for you. So that's when I said it was time to turn a new page. And that's exactly, though, when I said raising hell with you, I want you to know in the 13 months that I have left, I'm not going to just kind of go around and collect awards and, you know, go to a lot of head tables, et cetera. I'm going to go across that finish line like Flojo. I'm going <laughs> to... Now, I might not be a marathon runner, don't quite have the geography, but I am, or topography, I do, though, am a marathon worker, and I want to make sure that I'm working for you so that you get a chance to be you, to do the great things and in innovation and exploration that you do, and great things for our country. So when I cross that finish line, my arms are going to be up, and I'm going to go hoorah, hoorah. And like I said, better to say about Barb Mikulski, well done than overdone. 
So that's why I want you to know that I am out here continually to work for you. And why? I am so proud of the men and women who work here at APL. One of the great joys of my life was getting to know APL, APL when I came to the United States Senate. When I came to the United States Senate, you know, of course we know Johns Hopkins. You can't grow up in Baltimore and not know about Johns Hopkins, whether it's the great Homewood campus, whether it's also the dynamic Broadway campus that's also working to save lives every day. But I came out to APL, and there I met its leadership, saw the great work you were doing for national defense. Remember, when I got first elected, it was before the Berlin Wall came down. Ronald Reagan was in the White House. We had a pretty good relationship. He said that I would go the way. Uh, he said, I don't know if she's got a future. She might go the way of the hula hoop and the asparagus diet. Um, I tried that asparagus diet, and I think hula hoops work better, quite frankly. <laughs> but anyway, I saw the great work you were doing then and the great work that you could. Thanks also to P Senator Paul Sarbanes. I got acquainted not only with the wonderful work in defense, but also with the space work here and the emeritus person in the role of Dr. Kermengis. And so now for over close to 30 years, to know that there are 5,300 employees, many of whom are engineers and scientists, but all working on the mission, whether it's the facility manager or the PhD, to do what this work is done, working in defense, homeland security, NASA, NSA, and of course, in space. And I want you to know that I'm very, very proud of you. When I look around at what you do, and I see from your early days of inventing the first GPS system to helping our allies win the war in the Pacific by defending our Navy ships against a, 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 attacks, all the way up to now, making sure we're developing the right equipment to protect our men and women in uniform as they ride Humvees in very dangerous ter terrain from IEDs. What I have seen from APL, no project was too small, no project was to be done, no project was too big not to be undertaken. And you have had a great reputation from being innovative, cost-effective, and responsive. While you were busy doing all this fantastic work in space, I wanted to be sure that good old NASA, you remember NASA? <laughs> they like to show up for the photo ops. Don't tell them I said that. <laughs> But I show up at the Appropriations Committee. We're a nice team. We are a nice team. But also to, do, to make sure that NASA knew this. Now, as a United States Senator, I've been in a pretty big kind of, I don't want to say combat, but you know, California has two pretty dynamic women senators in Feinstein and Boxer. They are so jealous of JPL, but it takes two of them to fight for JPL when you've got one of me fighting for APL. And I'll box above my weight. Well, box at my weight anytime. So we've been working with you, and we could, of course, develop these fantastic projects, whether it's been the study of heliophysics, the space department, um, space weather, living with a star, the APL Earth-Sun Connection Legacy from ACE, Stereo, the Van Hollen, Van Hollen, Van, well, there's Van Hollen and there's Van Allen. Get to know them both, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All of being done here at APL. But we worked on it because we worked together. I knew that you had the talent to be able to develop these wonderful scientific instruments and the probes that are so necessary because you brought both tremendous scientific and engineering talent, but you also had such a commitment to mission. And we proved that time and time and time again, just like most recently on the New Horizons project, that everyone said, oh, wow. And NASA was about ready to throw that under the bus. But thanks to the wonderful work here at APL, 
the idea that you came up with, the fact that, yes, it was going to be a nail biter. We either got it once, we got it right once, as it did its uh, encounter with Pluto, or we would lose it. But look at the great success. Just like Hubble is rewriting the scientific textbooks, now so is the Pluto New Horizon project. And through the genius of the way you collected the data and now are processing the data, more and more every day in every way, we're learning more and there's more to be done. And I look forward to the future projects or the projects that you're working with right now. Certainly, we want to make sure that Europa gets done and done the way it should. Sure, we want to make sure that DART, you know, is not just a game, you know, uh, or, or just not a tool you use in a bar in Fells Point. <laughs> I play darts. Um, and so on. And we want to take a look at uh, DART. So we are working on all of these just tremendous projects. As we go now through the Appropriations Committee, we have two more years to go. And I want you to think that my work is really for two years, though I have 13 months to go. What do I mean? We are finishing up this now, the fund money in the federal checkbook for fiscal 17. And, excuse me, for fiscal 16, yeah, 16. And then we'll, this time next year, we'll be finishing it. We are working together. And I am working on a bipartisan basis with my friend, my dear friend, Senator Shelby of uh, Alabama. He's, you know, Huntsville, there for the big SL, you know, the projects to go to Mars, to do exploration out of space. And then there's those of us in space science. We know that NASA can't be just a Johnny One Note. As much as we admire the daring do of our astronauts, whether they continue to maintain and service the space station that's doing so much, the fabulous job they've done over the years repairing the Hubble Space Telescope, and also the work that they will do when we do continue human space flight. But while we do human space flight, we have to also continue space science because it is space science that tells us about the world we live in today, how we protect that world, whether it's from an asteroid or a solar flare, or where we will go that it won't be a human being going, but we go technologically. And in going where nobody's gone before, we'll lay the groundwork for a better life here on our planet. So we're working together to put the right money in the federal checkbook so you get to do the wonderful work you do. And when I see the work that's been done, not only in the scientific exploration of your projects, I look at the breakthroughs because of you. Had you not done in 1964 that project called Transit, we wouldn't have the GPS today. And we know how stunning its accomplishments are. The work that you've done in order to fly even into space, to come so close to a planet, to come so close to the sun, what you do in miniaturization, the very process of technological development is really what will be translated ultimately into our civilian community. And I want us to keep winning the Nobel Prizes, but I want us to keep winning the Nobel, uh, while we win the Nobel Prizes, I also want us to win the markets that will be the new jobs for our people. And I want you to know in the time that I have left, and even the time after this, that I will continue to vote, fight for you. I intend to, do, to devote my life always to science, technology, and innovation. When I was a real little girl, nine years old, my mother and father took me to see a movie about Madame Curie. It was played by a marvelous actress, Greer Garson. She won an Oscar for it, and I so loved it. They wanted me to see a woman of Polish heritage do something so stunning, uh, which was to go on and invent radium, discover radium, not invent radium, that could change the world. I came back and I wanted to be a scientist. My mother and father bought me a little chemistry set and I did my little nine-year-old girl experiments and so on and I thought that a career in science was gonna be for me. 
But once I hit high school, I hit a rocky road. The element table didn't, and I didn't quite bond. And <laughs> then I went off to college, and I remember uh, chemistry, and I remember organic chemistry. I remember Boyle's gas laws. Remember, gas takes the size and shape of its container, a little bit like the United States Senate sometimes. <laughs> but um, the fact is, is that I was not gifted at doing science. In fact, I knew it and I could learn it, but I was klutzy at doing it. So I went into a different field and I went into sociology, a career in social work, a career at organizing for self-help. But in my heart always beat the desire to promote and advance science. And I just loved it and came to know all of the wonderful people who do it. And so wherever I am, whether it's today going back to the floor of the United States Senate, or when I leave the Senate, I hope to be involved in inspirational leadership, helping our young people be able to continue to dream, to believe that they should become engaged in a civic society. We're going to continue to promote innovation, innovation for our society, and I will be part of it. Because what I want to be able to do as I look ahead and I ask you to, is that we need to stand up for tomorrow. We also need to stand up for our young people. I worry about our young people. I worry about the growing lack of the opportunity for college affordability. I tease some of the people uh, on the other side of the rail there, is this your student debt? But it is no laughing matter. You know it. No matter who you are, no matter what your income is, you are either sitting in this room with student debt or you're looking ahead to your own children or grandchildren and the student debt that they have. I want to not only fund research at our great federal labs, I want to not only promote research and development at great university-affiliated institutions like that, but I want to fund our human, human infrastructure. If you have a dream and you think you know how to do it, I want you to be able to follow that dream. And in the United States of America, I don't want the financial barriers to education to be the barrier. We want to be able to open that up. And then to the young people, as they go out and study and do the things that they want to do, remember that they have to give back to America. And I think we need to promote more civic engagement. In my own institution, I say, let's end the partisanship and concentrate more on citizenship. Rather than on what divides us along partisan lines, what unites us along American lines? We're now united that we want to defeat ISIS. That is absolutely that. But I want to defeat other things along with ISIS. I want to defeat ignorance. I want to defeat the corrosive effects of poverty. I want to end discrimination and bigotry. I want to find the cures for problems. For me, it's not only how bomb, many bombs we will drop, yes, that's important, but how many breakthroughs we're going to fund. And this is what I've devoted my life to in the United States Congress and what I'm going to devote my life to afterwards. But I want to invite all of you to stand up for tomorrow. And I also just want to say that my goal for myself will be for the rest of my life, always try to learn something new. That's how I got to know you. Always try to either keep an old friend or make a new one. And also to ask every day, why did God make me and how can I make a difference? And people say, well, will you forget us when I go around the state? The answer is no. Helen Keller said this. She had, she had many quotes. For a woman who was blind, she had such incredible vision. And one, her two quotes that I use a lot are these. She says, all that we deeply love, we will never lose. All that we have met becomes a part of us. So as I look at my career here in the United States Congress, what have I deeply loved? That I have represented the greatest state in America in terms of science, technology, that promoted innovation for the goodness of mankind and also gave it away for the common heritage of mankind, like what we've done in space. And when I think about all that I've met, I think about coming here. 
whether I met with the engineer making the new prosthetic device for one of our wounded warriors so that they can not only walk again or lift again, but that they can have a life with the technology that they would have never thought. I thought about the facility manager who greeted me, who was just as involved and passionate about the mission as the PhD. I thought about those who did the solar probe, those who think about the Pluto probe, those who are working in national defense and doing all those things to either protect our country or the warfighter, and those who are doing other things to protect our planet. So when I say, will I ever forget you, no. All that I've deeply loved, which is you, I will never lose. And for each and every one of you, all that I've met, you've become part of me. God bless you, and God bless America. Senator, the, uh, just, to, just to close out the event here, you should know that this has been broadcast to all of our, all of our staff, so I'm, I know everyone around the lab will be very happy to hear your remarks. And while you may not have uh, bonded with the periodic table, you surely have bonded with us. Thank you. Thank you very much.